Uh, hi everyone and uh, welcome to this series of uh, PAO uh, exams and this is electrical A6 the uh, power systems and machines and here we have a question about DC uh, motors so it says here at 250 volt 1700 rpm the 250 volt is basically the machine rated input voltage shunt DC motor what do we mean by shunt in the motors, DC motor, there are two different types of winding. The one of them is called the field winding. This is the field. And the second one is basically called the armature. The field is the stator. And the armature is basically the, the rotor. Okay. When we say shunt means that these two windings are connected in parallel as we see here. This is your VT terminal voltage here. This is your RF. This is the field winding is in parallel with RA. Now this EC, we call it the counter EMF or the back EMF. What is this counter or back EMF? I will leave a link in the video description to describe what is this basically EC or EB. Uh, this is not a supply that we inserted. This is something induced in the armature winding as the core as the rotor start to rotate so the full description will be in you in, in the video okay now here it says it operates at rated voltage con or rated conditions it means that the vt is basically the 250 volt this is your vt driving a constant torque so here is the load that you have and the torque here is constant so you are not changing the 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 load has a line current of 41.6. In shunt motor, there are three different currents, I line, I field, and I armature. So this current is 41.6 amps. When fed by the 250 volt, the armature circuit resistance and the field are given to you. So this is as 0.4 ohm, and this is 250, 250 ohm. And then we need to find these quantities then without changing the torque load so we keep the load as it is if we decrease rf what will happen in the motor and also we will talk about this assume a linear magnetic circuit linear means that that the if is proportional to the flux linearly okay so if or the flux so both of them are linearly proportional so as i increase i f in the same way the flux is will be increasing so i can replace the flux with basically your i f okay so let's now start solving the the first part of the of the question we want to find the armature current this we know i line is given to us basically as the 41.6 amp so i need to find i f very straightforward your i f using ohm's law is equal to the this is this is part a the 250 volt divided by the 250 ohm which will give you one amp from this you can find that your ia is equal to i line minus if so we have everything and this will give me 40.6 amps so this is your i ia b what is the output power before i answer this question let me show you the power flow diagram in a DC motor. So in the DC motor, we start basically from the v P input. And the P input in the shunt motor is equal to VT times I line. So the voltage here times the line current give you the input power. Then you take from this, what we call is the I square R loss. The I square R loss, there are two different types of I square R loss. There is IF, square times rf and this i a square times r a now when you subtract the i square r loss from pn you get what we call the developed power p developed which is also equal to ec times i a so this pd you can subtract pn minus the summation of the i square r losses or directly bc uh, ec times i a then we have the P core, losses in the core, the 
the P mechanical losses due to the friction and P stray. Some stray losses induce currents in the structure and so on and so forth. These three losses, we call them P rotational. Now, when you subtract PD from these rotational loss, you get your P, your P out. So your P out is basically PD minus P rotational. Now, in this question says here, if the rotational losses are negligible, it means that your P, P out is equal to your PD, the developed power. So clearly now I need to find the EC. Now EC is this voltage, just apply KVL. So your EC is equal to the terminal voltage VT minus IA times RA. And this will give me 250 minus IA, which is 40.6 times your RA, which is equal to your 0.4. This will give me 233.76. And this, from this, you get your P out, which is equal to the P developed, which is equal to EC times IA which is 233.76 times IA, which is 40.6. And this will give me 9,490.6 Watt. Okay. Now, there is another way to find the same thing, to find the output power. Okay. How to find the output power in a different way? As I mentioned, you can find the output power by subtracting Pn minus the I square R loss. Let's, let's do this. So your Pn is equal to Vt times I line, which is 250 times the line current, which is the 41.6. And this will give you 10,400 what from this your pd would equal to the pn minus the summation of the i square r loss we have two i losses we have uh, basically the rf losses and the ra so the summation of i square r loss is equal to i f square times rf plus i a square times ra and if you substitute here this is one square times 250 plus IA square. It is 40.6 square times 0.4. And this will give me 659.4 Watt. Then your PD is equal to the 10,400 minus 659.4. And this will give me again the 9,490.6 Watt, which is equal to the P out because this the partitional losses is basically are ignored. Uh, they are ignored. Okay. So here you see this is your P, your P out. You get exactly the same, the same value. Now in part C, it says find the mechanical developed torque. So this is the mechanical developed torque at the output. Now we know that your P out is equal basically is equal to the torque times omega. So your torque is equal to P out, which is equal to the 10,400 divided by omega, which is 2 pi over 60 times N in RPM, 1700. This is how you convert from RPM into omega. And if you do that, you will find the torque is equal to 53.3 Newton meter. Finally, what is the efficiency? Efficiency is your P out over Pn. And we have uh, everything. We know P out and we know Pn. So this is 9490.6 divided by 10,400 times 100 and this will give you 91.3%. So this is the efficiency of basically your motor. Now, this is the first part of the question. In the second part, without changing the torque load, so the torque that is applied at the shaft doesn't change. It's the same torque. 
The field resistance is decreased to 200. So I only change RF to 200 ohm. Under these new conditions, calculate, we want to find the armature current. What will be IA now at that new conditions? So now we need to find IF at the second condition, which is IF2. Now it's equal to 250 divided by the new resistance, which is 200, and this will give me 1.25 amps. Now I need to find IA. How to find IA now? Now I have to use the torque equation. The torque is proportional with IF times IA. IF coming from the flux. Actually, the torque is proportional to the flux times IA, but because the flux and IF is assumed to be linear, so you can substitute the flux with IF. So the torque is proportional. When, the, when you have something proportional, it means that the torque is equal to a constant times IF times your IA. So torque at the first condition is equal to constant times IF1 times IA1. And the torque at the second condition is equal to K, the same K. This K is basically is a constant that represents the material, the motor structure. Since it's the same motor, actually it's the same K. IF2 times IA2. Now let's divide these two equations together. Now, the question says that without changing the torque, it means the torque is constant. So T1, T1 is equal to T2. So it means that this will be equal to 1. And this K will cancel with the K. I know IF1, I know IA1, I know IF2. From this, I can find IA2, your IA2, the current, armature current at the second, or at this condition, is uh, basically equal to 32.48 amps. This is your, your current. Find the line current, I line 2, this is part F, it's very straightforward, I line 2 is equal to IA2 plus IF2, just KCL. And this will give me a current, total current equal to 33.73 amps. Okay. Then what is the motor new speed? Now here again, we need to use another relationship, very important relationship, that your EC is proportional to the flux times omega. Okay. Again, I can substitute the flux with IF proportional to IF times omega, or your EC is equal to a constant times IF, and instead of omega, we can use N here as well. So it's omega or N because, again, this is another, another constant, so we can use IF times N. So this is a very important relationship. N is in RPM, omega is in radian per second, so it's the same, the same thing. Okay, so that is something very, very important to, uh, to watch. Now, how to solve this question? Basically, you find EC1, which is equal to, we, we did that from the KVL, we did that before, is equal to 233.76. This is, has been already calculated, which is equal to constant K times IF1 times N1. Now, I know N1 and I know IF1, and now I know EC1. Now, EC2 would equal to your VT, which doesn't change, 250 minus the new IA, IA2, which is 33.73. So this is your IA2 times the 0.4, and this will give me 236.5 volt. And this is equal to K IF2 N2. If I call equation one, equation two, let's divide one, divide by two. Okay, so this will give me EC1 over EC2 equal to KIF1 in one divided by KIF2 in two, everything I know except in two. So from this, your N2 will be equal 1,375.9 RPM.
So basically, when we decrease the uh, the current or the flux in the machine, uh, or, or sorry, here we increase it. Actually, we reduce the resistance from 250 to 1. So we increased IF. We increase the flux. When we increase the flux, we reduce the speed, and vice uh, versa. Finally, in part H, find the new P out, which is again this is equal to EC2 times IA2, which is equal to 236.5 times. 32.48 and this will give me 7,681.5.54. Okay, so this is a very interesting question that has almost everything in DC in DC machine. And now we know how to handle the different parameters of such a question.